Hey, welcome to worshiptutorials.com. My name is Brian. In this video, we're going to learn how to play the song Sea of Victory by Elevation Worship on electric guitar. I'm going to do this in the original key, which is B flat. That's the same as the album. As you can see, I'm using a capo on the first fret. The only reason I'm doing that is it's going to let me, uh, you know, if I want to play open shapes, which we're not going to do much of in this song, but I'll show you where you can. Uh, you can just use key of A chords. So the way I'm going to approach this video is I'm going to take it section by section. I'll demonstrate, I'll teach how to play it, then I'll demonstrate it, talk a little bit about tone, and then we'll move on. Uh, quickly what I'm using for this video, this is a Shelton Electric Instruments Skyflight 4. Uh, you can use whatever guitar you want, it doesn't really matter. I'm playing through our Helix patch for this song for this video, again, doesn't matter, I'll tell you what you need to get sort of the tone for the individual parts. Really, this video is going to be a lesson about the fourth position of the G minor pentatonic scale because you're gonna use it a lot in this video. Bradford and I, when we talk about electric guitar stuff, we always talk about the importance of using shapes uh, and all these different shapes, you can, you can move them up and down. So if your worship leader changes the key of this song, which they might, because it's hard to sing in this key. Uh, these shapes will let you move things around. So let's talk about the intro. So I'll play the intro for you and then uh, teach you how to do it. It goes like this. So you're gonna start out on the 17th and 19th fret. Most guitars will have a dot on each of those frets right in front of them, 17 and 19. You're on the G string and uh, I like to use my index finger on the 17th fret and then that's the first note up to the 19th fret, and then you're gonna slide into the first basic shape that you're gonna use in this song all along. And then I, you're gonna end up with your ring finger, slide it down to the 12th fret. That's usually where there are two dots on your guitar. So again, 17, 19, 12. And you kinda hear them do that slide in the album. Okay, so at this point you're using this shape if you were gonna play a B flat, which is the key that the song is in, you're gonna have your uh, index finger barred on the 10th fret, and then you put your middle finger down on the B string on the 11th fret, and it makes a D shape on 10, 11, 10. Okay, and then you can uh, use this shape, that's basically an A, and if you put your uh, ring finger down on the 12th fret of the D string, that forms a B flat chord. It's actually all within position four of the minor pentatonic, which is right here, starting on, it's all starting on the 10th fret. So you're gonna go 17, 19, and then slide down to 12, all on the G string, then B string 10, or sorry, 11, and then 10th fret of the G string again. Okay, again. With the effects, it sounds like this. But just remember, this is where that B flat chord lives, right up here, this shape. If you get that, you'll know it kind of gives you a place to come back to, okay? You can also play it an octave down, which I do in the playthrough video link below for that as well. So if you wanna play it an octave down, uh, you can start with your index finger on the fifth fret, up to the seventh fret, uh, sort of like the 17, 19 up here, it's five to seven. And then you go down to the fifth fret of the D string, and then third fret of, and this is not, this is ignoring the capo of the G string and then third fret of the D string. Again, five to seven on the G, five on the D, three on the G, and then three on the D. And it sounds like this. Yeah. 
on the album, I think what they have going on is two different guitar players playing both parts. So it's almost like an octave effect. If you have a pedal like a Pog or any kind of an octave pedal, you can set it to give you an octave up and then play it down here, or you can set it to give you an octave down and play it up here. That way you kind of get both parts. Or you can uh, do what I did in the playthrough videos, play it up high the first time through, then in the turn, play it down low. It's gonna give you a little more beef if you play it down low. It's gonna cut through the mix more if you play it up high. Something to remember. For tone on this one, I'm using the Matchless DC30 amp model in the Helix. So any sort of Vox style amp, that, whatever amp you have really, uh, is good. I always set the amps up so that if you play hard on the bridge pickup, which is what I'm using here, uh, it, the amp will break up a little bit. Then I have a Tube Screamer on in front of that. I have a dual delay with a dotted eighth and quarter note and a lot of reverb and it sounds like this. 77.5 BPM is this song. Okay, moving on to what you play during verse one. It's kind of this really little ambient part. We're gonna uh, kind of live up here again on the 15th fret. I like to bar the, uh, the 15th fret with my index finger and then you're gonna hop up to the 18th fret with your pinky on the B string. So you're basically barring, you're playing the G string on the 15th fret with your index finger, and then you're on the 18th fret with your pinky on the B string. And it's just that. I finger pick it so you go, uh, your thumb would be on the G, and then your, the B string on the 18th fret, and then pull them both off on the 15th fret, that's it. And it sounds like this with all the effects. And then on every other time through it, you come down and play this B flat, this shape. Again, it's coming back. To get the tone on this section, it's basically the amp is just clean. That same dual delay is on, so eighth, dotted eighth, and quarter, and then I have another dotted eighth, so it kind of pronounces that dotted eighth uh, repeat thing, and again, lots of reverb. I'm using the Glitz reverb on the Helix for this, it sounds like. So you get those delays sort of feeding into each other. Okay, moving on to the main chorus riff of the song. Uh, it sounds like this. So again, we're working with shapes. So the main shape you're gonna play is, looks like this. And if you take your index finger, I'll show you how to build it. Take your index finger, bar across the sixth fret, take your middle finger, put it on the seventh fret of the G string, take your ring finger, put it on the eighth fret of the D string. It's just another B minor, or it's just another B flat chord. And that's basically how you're going to play this part. So you start on the 6th fret of the high E string, go to the 6th fret of the B string, go down, skip a string to the D, on the 8th fret to the 7th fret of the G string. Again, you're just playing this shape. You're just arpeggiating through a B flat chord is all you're really doing. And then on the second time through it, you do the same first three notes but you drop down to the fifth fret of the G string. Again, this is why knowing these shapes is so important. So if you just know that that's your B, that is a voicing of a B flat chord. You can play it there, you can play it there, you can play it there, which is where we got all those other parts, including the intro. Okay, if you just know that that's where those things are, it makes it really easy to find these parts play these parts and then transpose these parts if you need to. I'm gonna play it with all the effects and to get this sound, I have sort of a, a, a light to medium type of overdrive on going into the amp. It's a king of tone in the Helix. Uh, just dotted eighth note and the big delay is still on. It sounds like this.
Okay, so if you are a second guitar player in the band, or if you just want to make big rhythm chords, uh, this is where you can just play uh, just the open chords. So for this song, again, I'm capo one, so I'm playing key of A chords, but it would be a six, or in this case, an F sharp minor. Then it would go to a D. Then it goes to an A. Then it goes to an E. All right, the next thing you're gonna hit is verse number two, and it sort of has this rhythm type of uh, arpeggiated chord part that you play in it. Sounds like this. To play that part, what you're gonna do is, it starts on an F sharp minor, and to play that F sharp minor, uh, really, I, I plant my finger here in an A bar chord, or an A shape throughout this whole section. So the F sharp, I'm just gonna grab it with my thumb. It's actually a G, but F sharp relative to the capo. And then you just arpeggiate through this. So that's the first one. And then you go to, uh, it would be a D chord, but you can play it like this. Just keep your A shape, open A. Put your ring finger on the fifth fret, which will be two frets above your index finger. Okay, and then you do that same thing, except you're gonna hit, the, the last note you're gonna hit is the, the A string. Okay, so if I play it real slow, it goes like this. For the effects on this one, it's almost the same as the chorus. It's a little bit lower gain, so I have uh, a different instance of that King of Tone drive in the Helix, but it's a little lower gain. If you had an actual King of Tone pedal, it would be like using the yellow side for this part and the red side for the chorus. That's, that's kind of what it would be like. Or at least Bradford's King of Tone, all right? Uh, I'm using that dotted eighth delay again here, the big verb again. One thing that I, I kind of hear in this section is a chorus effect, but it's subtle. Okay, so I have a chorus pedal on in this one as well, but it's set at like 30, 25 to 30% mix. You don't really notice it, but it gives the tone just a little bit something extra. Sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so you come out of that straight into the chorus again, which is the same thing. Either you can play this part, or you can play just rhythm chords. All right, after that second chorus, uh, they go into sort of an instrumental section where the piano takes the lead, and then uh, the guitar actually kind of plays some accent stuff in here. So go back to that position four minor pentatonic scale where you find this B flat shape, uh, and so again, you're playing this B flat. Uh, if you take your pinky and put it, it's basically like, you know, you're playing a D and you're just gonna suspend it way up here, right? Um, so you put your pinky on, it would be the 13th fret. That's uh, in that in instrumental section, sort of on the four count of every other time through it, you'll hear him go. That's what the electric guitar is doing during that instrumental section. It's a cool thing to kind of throw in there. So you hear that It's a fun thing to throw in. And then when you get to the section where the electric guitar actually plays the part, you're gonna mimic what the piano was playing and it's all within this position of the minor pentatonic scale. So you start on the A string on the 10th fret. You go up to the G string on the 12th fret. You go down to the 10th fret on the G. Go back to the A string on the 13th fret to the 12th fret. And then you go, and then you start that cycle again and do the same part on the top. So 13 on, or 12 on the A string, 
12 on the G string, 10 on the G string, 13 on the A, back to 10 on the A. So I'm gonna play through it really slow and give you a close up so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, again, that's all part of this minor pentatonic scale. That's why it helps to know these shapes and play these scales. All right, it makes it, what makes it kind of hard is they're kind of skipping around strings. The tone for this section is going to be back to that big tube screamer. That's my main drive sound on this patch. Uh, dotted eighth delay, big reverb. It sounds like this. <laughs> So the second part of the uh, of the bridge, same chord, same words and everything, you're playing a different part. And it goes like this. It starts there again, and it uses uh, higher notes in the scale. So you can either start it here on the, on the 10th fret of the A string or the 13th fret. Those are the two notes in the scale on that string. Uh, I think on the album they start on the 13th fret. And then they jump up to the B string on the, uh, would be the 11th fret, down to the 10th fret, go to the 10th fret on the G string, 10th fret on the D string. So again, it's, and then you start here, 10th fret of the D string, and then you go 13th fret of the B string, ten, uh, down to the 11th fret of the B, down to the 10th fret of the B, you just walk down the scale, 12th fret of the G, and then you start it over. Okay, I'm gonna slow it down, give you a close-up view so you can see it. Okay, all in that scale. All right, for the tone on this one, same as before, I just add uh, more drive, because it gets a little bigger. Sounds like this. So that's it, that's really every section of the song. Um, really the hardest part, at least for me, coming from like a rhythm, acoustic, strumming guitar background, was learning those, uh, those bridge parts. And again, it's just really scale work. This is actually a great song to use to practice, um, sort of practice getting scales. Uh, it's not super fast, you know? One thing that's kind of hard about it might be the timing in those sections. So it's it uh, starts on the up. So one. Really, it's just a matter of listening to the song and getting it down. But that was a little hard for me um, when I first started learning it to know I'm not hitting that note on the downbeat. I'm hitting it actually on the upbeat. Uh, and, and it's kind of a syncopated rhythm type of thing. But again, this is a great one to, to use as a sort of a practice song. It's, it's not that difficult, but it sounds cool when you do it. And as an, if, especially if you're a beginner to intermediate player, you might find this one difficult at first, but the more you practice, it's, like I said, it's not super fast. So it's gonna be easier for you to pick it up. And this will sort of set you up for doing some more difficult things on guitar down the road. Links below to see our uh, playthrough videos of this song. If you don't want the whole explanation, you just want to see us playing it, you can do that. You can see it there. If you want to download this patch for the Helix, you can get it there. We have it available for Axe FX3. Hopefully Kemper, not yet, but at the time you're watching this, it might be available for Kemper as well. Really cool song from Elevation. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you want more stuff like this, I'm committing to more electric guitar tutorials in the future. I think it's a huge need in the church that, uh, that we're gonna help fill. There's a lot of great 
places out there where you can get this type of content as well. But uh, yeah, just like to add our voice uh, to the mix with it as well. So subscribe, hit the notification bell icon. Uh, when you subscribe, that way YouTube will tell you when we upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.